Hello, I guess I'm live with no viewers or anything. Um, so this video is about a book I had read called uh, Victoria Peak, What Men Call Treasure. It's a really good book. Uh, it's related to New Mexico and um, a treasure that this guy supposedly found on Victoria Peak. Um, you'll have to read the book to know all the details. It's called Victoria Peak, What Men Call Treasure. Okay, and I wrote this after I read the book. Victoria Peak, WMCT. So that's my title. The WMCT means what men call treasure. <laughs> An effort so magnificent, despair and desperation so deep. Hidden treasure, hidden treasure. And there's Babe Nas holding treasure. A dying man from HIV being robbed of his family history. Airmen being robbed, being ran out of the Air Force at Hallman Air Force Base because they found a cave, a cave, a cave full of gold. Multiple credible eyewitnesses, 40 years apart, with only punishment for the truth. Someone somewhere has all the gold and jewels and history of Victoria Peak. This someone robbed not just the, the Nas family, but all of New Mexico, all Apaches, and a dying grandson, Terry Delonis. And so I guess that's what pretty much what I wrote after I read the book. Um, I'll tell you now what the book's kind of about. Um, it's about this guy, Doc Noss, circa 1920s in Las Cruces, New Mexico, Hatch, New Mexico, that area. Um, he went deer hunting up in the San Andreas Mountains, and he supposedly found a cave. And this cave had uh, gold jewels, uh, gold bars, uh, things like that. But the tunnel into the cave was really narrow, so he only pulled out a few items. And there's photographs in this book of those items, Spanish crowns, jewels, uh, armor, stuff like that. And so that's the stuff he pulled out of the tunnel. And he even pulled out some gold bars too. Um, so he was trying to dynamite the tunnel to make it wider, but in the process he ended up caving the tunnel in. So then he went and got investors to give him money to help him excavate this tunnel. <sighs> or he's swindling them, one or the other, right? I guess that's up to history, right? And uh, what happened was uh, he was never able to reopen the tunnel after he had caved it in. And to make luck even worse, the White Sands Missile Range then became into creation and it took over all that land. So when it took over that land, it uh, after that, the family wasn't allowed on there, even though the family had, had done like claims and stuff for treasure trove claims and stuff like that with the state of New Mexico. Um, once the White Sands Missile Range came in, the family wasn't allowed over there anymore. So that just made it even more difficult for Doc Noss to get these items out of the cave. And one of his investors ended up wanting his money back to that effect. And since he didn't get his money back, this investor uh, killed and shot Doc Noss in Hatch, New Mexico. I want to say 1930-ish. So then... Um, Fast forward 40 years and the family was still fighting with the government and around about the 1970s, 1980s, the government finally let the family go back in there and explore the cave. Wait, I'm skipping a step. Sorry. I want to say 1960s. Uh, there's some airmen from Holloman Air Force Base. They are out there hiking and they find a different entrance into the cave. And so they go crawl through these tunnels or whatever and they get to the same cave as Doc Noss and it's another cave or same cave, uh, with gold bars, Spanish armor, they even uh, say skeletons. So um, these airmen find it, and they file all the legal paperwork that the military would require, and um, supposedly then, after, shortly after the airmen did that, all of a sudden the caves got cleaned out. And uh, the airmen, they were like sworn to secrecy or something like that, and they were all ran out of the Air Force or uh, actually sent to like mental asylums, I guess. And, um, so that's what happened with that. Okay. And so then after that, <laughs> after that, that what happens with the airmen, now the family gets permission from the government to go in there and actually dig out the treasure and stuff like that. So the family goes out there and, um, the, the government though has a lot of rules on it and a lot of like financial rules, a lot of regulations on what they can do, can't do almost so m many rules that from the get go, the family feels like they're going to fail. And uh, it's the grandson who's mostly leading the operation uh, for or spearheading it. Uh, his name was Terry Delonis. Um, and this, it's a kind of a tragic story because he ends up uh, contracting, what is it called, uh, sarcomas and HIV and things like that. Or um, some sort of dark spots started appearing first. And uh, I think they were called sarcomas. Um, 
melanoma, sarcomas. Oh, so um, the family doesn't get in there. Um, they even have expert treasure hunters go over there and examine the areas. And they use like ground penetrating radar and they can see things like tunnels and caves and stuff like that. But the government really wasn't having any of it. And after this, it was a short episode where they let the family dig out there. Um, I don't remember the exact amount of time, but it wasn't like a year or two years or three years where the amount of time it would actually necessitate. And, uh, and for all we know, there's treasure is still in the cave or somebody took it out. Um, if you also read the book, there's a part where this comes up in the, the Watergate uh, investigation. It comes up, oh uh, gosh, F. Lee Bailey is an attorney. And then just randomly somehow in the Watergate scandal, some sort of audio is found of him talking about taking gold bars by helicopter uh, to the private residency of uh, Lyndon Johnson. So um, I think that was correct. Um, so anybody who wants to read the book and tell me what they think about it, uh, go ahead. Um, I've even filed like Freedom of Information Act requests on it and gotten nothing back, um, which doesn't surprise me because I filed I filed Freedom of Information Acts twice, and both times the government has pretty much refused to give me uh, any sort of documents on the issue. So I don't know why they call it Freedom of Information Act if they can still say nope. Uh, so apparently a mytho mythological story about treasure in a mountain would be too secret for them to give documents out about it. And uh, <laughs> that just goes to show you how much it might be true, right? <laughs> Alrighty. Well, let me know what y'all think about the story of Victoria Peak. Uh, let me know if I missed anything in the story. Um, I highly recommend the book. It was an awesome book. I, I just lent my copy out to my friends so they can read it too. And uh, hopefully this live video will be saved so uh, somehow people can watch it too. All right, bye.